Hello, welcome. Come on, you made it. We know you have some joy inside of you that needs to come out. Come on, let's praise our God. Just give us a second. As we get ready, if we can just remember, like in his word, his faithfulness was true yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen. Come on, here we go. Hands together.
deserve the glory. Come on, can I invite you to lift up your hands and tell him today, you are worthy of it all. Yes, Jesus, your church is singing right now. You are worthy of it all. song of praise in our spirit and we thank you that you're here inhabiting our praise let gratitude stir in our hearts this morning as we sing let us remember the good things that we receive from you but more than anything let us remember Jesus this Jesus is the biggest sign of love from the Father to us that is how we experience the love of God through the Son and this morning, Lord, we are grateful for your son. We're grateful for him. And we give him praise. And we give him glory. I can't 
Ah! 
happy this morning come on we're in the presence of God and in his presence there's joy forevermore amen wow it's a wonderful thing that no matter what kind of hard times we go through we can still have the joy and the delight of knowing the Lord and him residing in our hearts amen amen that joy that passes all understanding people can't even understand why we can keep a good attitude going through the hard times of life. Well, it's because we have a God and a Father that we can call upon in times of trouble. Listen to this promise from the Word of God. I don't see it on my screen, so I've got to read it from my phone. All right, here we go. Psalm 145, verse 18. Listen to this. The Lord is near to all who call on Him. Everybody say, the Lord is near. Yeah, he's near to you right now, closer than your breath. He's not far away. He's near to all that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. Yeah, he'll give us the desires of our heart. He hears their cry and he saves them. What a promise. Folks, some of us are here this morning, you've got a desire in your heart. Maybe it's the desire of a particular kind of job. Maybe it's the desire to own your own business. Maybe it's the desire to find a godly spouse and to have a partner in life. I I don't know what your desire is, but I do know this. God can give us the desires of our heart. Amen? He can give us the desires of our heart. He promises to do that. I have prayer requests here. People needing healing from cancer, needing the Lord to guide them. Maybe some of you have similar type needs. Let's bow our heads and pray. Let's call upon Him because He's near to us. In Jesus' name, Father, we call upon You. We need Your help. We need Your provision. We receive Your healing power into our bodies this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, And Lord, we thank you that you are granting the desires of our heart to be fulfilled. We give you praise. We give you our faith. We believe we receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's sing. Lift up your song. Because you got a lion inside of those bones. Get up and pray. Come on, church. Lift them up today. Come on, clap your hands. Shout to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you. Welcome, welcome to Abundant Church this morning. 
And welcome to the presence of God. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm aware that God is in this place. How about you? Yeah, He's here to do anything we need to teach us, to guide us. We're so glad that you're here to receive from God through His Holy Spirit right here in this place this morning. Hey, if you're here for the very first time, we want to give you a gift and give you a special welcome as well. If you're here for the first time, or maybe the first time in a long time, would you put your hand up, wave at me, keep it up real big till our ushers find you. They're going to give you a gift right now, and we're going to give you a welcome, yeah. Welcome, welcome to church. Bienvenidos. Welcome, everyone. We're so glad that you're here. We've got a little gift for you there, information about our ministry, what we're about, what, our, what is our dream, and what we'd love to do to help you as well. And uh, there's also a, a card with a QR code that you can scan and register your attendance if you'd like to do that. That will enable us to pray for you. We'd love to pray for you and reach out to you. All right. Welcome. Welcome to church. Hey, we've got something special going on today during the service. We have our Holy Spirit class. You know, when a person's born again, he's ready for heaven. But when a person is filled with the Holy Spirit, now he's ready for earth. Yeah, how many of you know Christians need to get ready to live life on this earth? And every one of us need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We have a special class where we teach on the experience and the power that is to be found in what Jesus called the baptism in the Holy Spirit. He recommended it to us. He expects us to receive the Holy Spirit in fullness. And we can teach you all about that and explain how to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit in our class. Our team is right back here. They're waving at us from this doorway right back here. You, can, If you'd like to go, please go and follow them into classroom B, and we'll teach you all about it during this service. We'd love for you to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit of God. You can go with them right now at this moment. All right, turn to your neighbor. Give them a good Christian greeting, maybe a holy kiss on the cheek or a, or a, a, a hug or a handshake. There you go. And you may be seated. Everybody, if you would, watch the screens for these exciting video announcements. Thank you. Yo, so listen, culture nights are always amazing. Always amazing. Every time, never fails to deliver. God shows mm -hmm. up. Yes, sir. Things happen. Yes, Lives sir. are changed. Listen, if you've never been to culture night, you need to come to culture yes. night. Your face needs to be in the place. So next one, Friday, April 19th, be yep. in the room. Right it's life changing. Until then, be in a circle. The right circle can change your life. Find us on social at This Prime Culture. Find us on YouTube, the podcast. It's incredible. If you're a young adult, you need to be a part of This Prime Culture. I love y'all.
All right. Where are all my One Sisterhood girls? Let me see your hands. Are you coming? Yes. I really want to take a moment since I'm here on the east side and personally invite you girls to be there and not just be at this one, but to be also at the west side one. God has given me such a special thing that is going to happen both nights. They're going to be totally, totally different. The parties are going to be totally different and you need to be there. All right. If I could say that to you as a pastor, I would say you need to be there. The second thing I want to encourage you to do is to invite some new. There's not a better thing to bring a first-time person to church at than girls' night out. I have people tell me all the time, I've been inviting, I've been inviting. They always tell me no, but then I told them about girls' night out, and they said yes. Why? Because they think it's a party. And it is, but it's a party with Jesus. Amen. All right, so if you're here today, guys, girls, and you would help me to spread the word by inviting people to come, you could leave these at your work, at, with your family, your friends, at a coffee shop, whatever. Would you just slip your hands up? Our ushers have some of these invite cards. Keep your hands up until they get to you. Guys, you can even help me pass them out. I really appreciate you spreading the word. Oh backwards and inviting people to come. Also, on the back of this card is the QR code to sign your children up to attend the kids party. Girls Night Out is free. Everybody is welcome, but you do have to register for a ticket for the kids party. We've got a limited number of spaces, and from what I heard, we sold a whole lot of tickets last week, so there's not that many left, so make sure you get registered today, and um, you do that by scanning this QR code. All right. Thank you, girls, so much. I can't wait to celebrate with you and kick off Summer at Abundant with Girls Night Out. I've got a question for you today. How many of you are a part of the giving family here at Abundant Church? Let me see your hands. Incredible. Look at all these hands. Hey, listen, thank you so much. The truth is we are abundant because of what you do. And I hope you know your giving is making a tremendous difference every single week. I've got another question for you today. How many of you want to give God a shout of thanksgiving because of what he has done through your giving. Amen. Awesome. At Abundant, we never give out a guilt, we never give out a manipulation, and we never give wondering what God might or might not do. At Abundant, we give because first and foremost, we believe everything we have, God has given to us. Can I get an amen today? Are you grateful for what God is doing in your life? I'm going to give you another chance. I said, are you grateful for what God is doing in your life? Amen. At Abundant, we give because we believe in the truth of God's word. And in his word, Jesus is very clear. He teaches us that one of the ways our life grows and gets better is through our giving. He explained it like this. He said, give and I'll give back to you. But he never gives us back just what we gave. He gives back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. In other words, when you give, your life can grow and get better. Amen? Now, I don't know about you, but I'm believing for God to do some things in my life. Anybody else? So I want to encourage you today, when you give, Give with faith, give believing, give knowing those promises, give trusting that God is faithful over his word. Know that when you give, God is going to give back to you. Know that when you sow today, God's generosity is going to flow in your life to make your life better. Amen. You know, the incredible thing about giving here at church is this. When we give, not only does our life get better, but other lives get better as well. That's the power of who we are as a community. So after church today, our food pantry will be open. If you're here and you need the food, please go get it. It's located directly behind the church. Um, don't leave here without getting it if you need it. Thank you to our giving family for making that possible, all right? They put up on the screen behind me all the different ways that you can give. You can give online on the church app, text to give here in person. There's envelopes in the vomitory. There's a place in the lobby. You can put that after service. Also, if you're joining us online today, thank you so much for connecting with Abundant Church. If our church is speaking into your life, I encourage you to give today by doing so where it clicks, where it says online giving. Also, I want to invite you to come and visit us in person. We would love to get connected with you. All right, let's pray over our giving today. Father, I thank you for every seed that is being sown in your house today. I thank you, Father, that you are faithful over your word. When we give, you use our giving to grow our lives and to make other lives better as well. Father, I ask you to multiply everything given today so that more and more people can come to know you. In Jesus' name, amen.
men. Would you stand with me? And while you do that, I've got one quick last announcement. We handed out a lot of volunteer applications last week for Vision Sunday. Just a quick reminder to get those turned in at the Connect Centers in the lobby and to check out our church app. So many amazing things coming up. Prime Culture this Friday night. Don't miss it, all right? Let's worship. You were me of the old. You're worthy of it all. Yes, you are, Lord. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. Come on, you ready to lift it up one more time? You're worthy of it all. Father, we lift up our nation. Thank you for this country, Lord. Thank you for the freedom that we enjoy every single day. Now, Father, we just believe that we abide in the shadow of the Almighty, that no evil shall befall us, neither shall any plague come nigh our dwelling. Father, we pray for every man and woman that wears a uniform. Lord, surround them, protect them, keep them safe from harm. We lift up our leaders, Lord. Truly, we are in an hour where they need your wisdom. Father, speak to them. Guide them. Father, today at Abundant Church, we rise up in faith and we choose to believe that no matter what we hear in the news, Lord, you, God, are moving in this earth. We believe, Lord, that you will deal with evil and that your peace and your goodness rule and reign in Jesus' name. Now lift your hands towards heaven. Father, speak to us today. Speak to us, Lord. Oh, by your word and through your spirit, Lord, I ask that you give every person here and those that are watching online eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand. Father, your word tells us that when we learn the truth, the truth sets us free. Father, it is my prayer that as I speak the truth of your word, that freedom would be found that faith would be built and that hope would be renewed. Father, it is my prayer that the power of your word would do what you intend for it to do. May every heart that hears this word be made better. Holy Spirit, move in this place today and do what only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. You can say hello quickly to the people around you and then you may be seated. Are you excited to be in God's house today? (laughs) You guys are like, I'm not quite awake. You forgot to stop at Starbucks like I did. I said, are you excited to be in God's house today? Amen. Woke up this morning, scanned the news, and just went, thank you, Jesus, that I get to go to Abundant Church today. Where God's eyes are, his heart is. Come on. 
where we know that when two or more of us are gathered in his name, he is right here in our midst. Now, sometimes I think we get in the habit of taking things for granted. I just want to encourage you today. There are Christians all over the world that would give anything to walk through these doors today, to raise their hands freely, to boldly declare the name of Jesus. Come on. I'm grateful today, not only for who God is, but for what he is doing in this church and in our city and in our lives. Amen. Today, I get to kick off a brand new series here at Abundant Church. We're going to spend a couple of weeks talking about this. The series is called Bound by Promise. If you would like to follow along, my notes are on the church app. Feel free to get it out. Today, we begin a new series with direct ties to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. We're going to go straight to Matthew chapter 26. We begin in verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples. And Jesus said, take this bread, eat it, for this is my body. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sin. Say new covenant. We're all familiar with communion, but here we see a specific connection or tie to communion, Jesus makes reference to the new covenant in verse 28. He says, for this is the blood of the new covenant. If you've been coming to church here for any length of time, then you've probably heard us quote this. We say, how, how many of you are grateful today that we've got a better covenant with better promises? Amen. Amen. What Jesus is referencing is he's talking about the fact that when he is going to go to the cross, he's going to conquer death, hell, and the grave so that you can live with a better covenant, with better promises. What does that better covenant offer to you? Well, it offers to you so many things. It offers to you the power of salvation. It offers to you the power of righteousness. It is given to you through the free gift of God's grace for your life. And if you are here today or you're at home watching, the Bible gives us this assurance that if we would just say yes by faith, I want to receive this new covenant, then we are given the hope of eternal life. Amen. So Jesus begins to make reference to this new covenant. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 25, it says, In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This is the new covenant. Here we see it again. In my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now, covenant is a commonly used word in church. But the question this morning is, do you really understand its meaning? You see, few of us really understand the meaning of the word covenant as it relates to our personal lives and our lives and relationship with Jesus. I want to walk you through the definition of covenant. We're just kind of laying some groundwork here. That word covenant means an agreement that is usually formed between two or more parties to do or to not do something specific. Probably the most common covenant that you could think of in the everyday life that we live is the covenant of marriage, where we enter into and we make an agreement. We commit to do certain things and we commit to not do certain things. This word covenant comes from the Middle English word that means to come together or to agree. And one of the main points of a covenant is to cause the two parties to come together in agreement. So Jesus gave us a new covenant in his blood so that we could come together, listen to me, with him and with our heavenly father. In other words, Jesus gave us the new covenant 
in his blood so that we could come into agreement with everything that he created us to be and everything that he has done for us. Now, pause with me here for a moment. See, so often we say yes to Jesus, but we neglect part of this covenant. Now, what do I mean by that? We pick and choose what we're going to believe as far as our relationship with God. We pick and choose how we see our dynamic in relationship with God. We pick and choose the elements of our walk with God that we're going to function in. If that is you today, I hope that you will listen to me for the next 30 seconds. Your life will get so much easier and so much better. Come on. And so much happier. And the burden of the world will get so much lighter when you decide to fully come into agreement with everything that God has for you and everything he has done for you. Amen? Let me give you an example of how this works. I've got two small children. Life is so much happier for them when they do what I ask them to do the first time. The more I have to ask them to do the thing I need them to do, guess what? The tougher their life gets. Now watch this. Not only does their life get tougher, but my life gets tougher too. Why? Because I'm one of those moms, I don't want to have to be strict. I just want to have fun with you. I want to be happy with you. If I could help you today, my friends, I think God wants to be happy with you. I think God wants to live a wonderful life with you. I think God wants to rejoice with you. Now, make no mistake, God never judges you. He's always going to come along and help you. But how much easier is it to walk with God when you just decide to live his way so you get his results, where he gets to stop having to recalculate you and re-navigate you? You and let you start over. He's just sitting up there in heaven. He's like, oh my goodness, girl, you could have gotten there by May, but now it's going to take till August because you decided to do X instead of Y. I told you to do Y. I even told you what was going to happen when you did Y, but for some reason in your humanity, you still chose X. X. If you're here today and you often pick X, listen to me. Pick Y. Why? Because Y is God's way, and God's way produces God's results. Amen. Now, I know we got a lot of new people here at church, so let me help you. What are God's results? Some of you just went, I'm not sure I want God's results. I mean, I hear the stories about God. He's just no fun. Everything with God is no, 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 no. Can't, 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 can't. Don't, 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 don't. My friend, that is a lie of religion and a lie of the devil. See, life with God is all about the yes. Life with God is all about the can. Life with God is all about the victory, my friend. And if you would just come into agreement, watch. Guess what he says he'll do for you? He says he'll give you the manifestation of the God kind of life. Now, pause here with me. Watch this. Jesus goes to the cross. He sheds his blood. Why? So you can have the better covenant with better promises. What does that better covenant with better promises connect to? It connects to Jesus came that you might have life and have it more 
abundantly. The literal text says that life is the God kind of life. What is the God kind of life? Let me help you today. Let me build your faith today. The God kind of life is a life of joy. It's a life of peace. It's a life of health. It's a life of prosperity. It's a life of protection. It's a life of security. It's a life of wisdom. It's a life of guidance. It's a life of resource. It's a life of provision. It's a life of God's grace. It's a life of his favor. It's a life of knowing that although there's an enemy in the world, you can overcome. Why? Because greater is Jesus. Come on, somebody that is in you than anything that is in the world. Amen. So what was I saying again? Come into agreement with everything that God has done for you and everything that he says about you. Amen. That word covenant means a solid disposition. What is a disposition? It is the emotional outlook or the attitude or the state of mind. So a solid disposition or appointment of God to man. Did you hear that? The covenant represents God's mental outlook towards you. His emotional response to you, his attitude towards you, and his state of mind towards you, it also represents his appointment to you. So this is a powerful thing. This agreement or alliance means something. Now, as we walk through Scripture, there are several covenants that we read about. That we learn about. So we're going to spend the next few weeks talking about the most significant ones and the most relevant ones to us. Go with me today to Genesis chapter 12. We're beginning at the very beginning of the Bible. We begin in verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abram, if you don't know who Abram is, later on God changes Abram's name to Abraham. You probably heard of Abraham. So the Lord has said to Abram, get out of your country. From your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. How many of you have heard us say that? You're blessed to be a blessing. That was first spoken to Abraham. We continue. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. So let's just jot a few notes here about what's going on. Number one, God chooses to have a relationship with Abraham. I want you to see it here. God comes to Abraham. So God is choosing a relationship with Abraham. And here's some good news for you today. God has chosen to have a relationship with you. I say God has chosen to have a relationship with you. Now just as I said that, I heard the Holy Spirit whisper to me, there's people that are here and are at home watching, and you've become convinced that God is not going to choose you. Why? Because of something that you've done a place that you've been, something that has happened to you because of things people have said to you, if that is you, listen to me today. No matter who you are, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter how many times you've done it, and no matter how bad it's been, God loves you and he chooses you today. Amen. So right here in Genesis, we see that this is the beginning of God and Abraham entering into a covenant. We're going to learn more about that in a moment. So we've already noticed that God approaches Abraham. So Abraham was not seeking the agreement with God. God comes to him. And the same is true with us, my friends. 
God set into motion this pursuit of you all the days of your lives. He set it into motion and he empowered it through the death, burial, and resurrection of his own son. So God chooses you. And I want you to see something here. God goes and he finds Abraham in Haran. Now, most of us read that. We just skim past the name. But what you need to know about Haran is that Haran in the Bible refers to a dry and hard place. A dry and hard place. Let me ask you this. Have you ever been in a dry and hard place in your life? El Paso. El Paso. <laughs> Pretty much. Only city in America where it sprinkles and we act like we just entered the flood. <laughs> a dry and hard place. Now see, again, and, and, and I'm speaking to somebody today. I don't know why I keep coming back to this place. Religion has tried to convince people that God only shows up in our life when we're in the good place. When we've been good, we've done right, we're doing everything we can to be perfect. If religion has convinced you of that, then you came to church on the right day. See, God shows up in every moment and every season. And let me tell you something. I can speak to this. See, I, I, I don't really know a time in my life away from God. Why? Because I was born here at Abundant. I mean, I've been coming to church every Sunday for like a while. But I have walked through some dry and hard places. And let me tell you something. God has been so good to me in the good times. God has been so good to me in the high moments. God has shown up when everything was going my way, when everything I learned in the Bible made sense. But my friend, I could testify for hours about how God has shown up in the dry place. And God has shown up in the hard moments. And God has shown up when everything told me no, and everything looked impossible, and every door seemed like it was slamming shut. Come on, somebody. God has shown up. Why? Because God chooses you. Just like he chose Abraham, he showed up in the dry and hard place. And I just want to remind you today how blessed we are, how blessed we are that all the days of our lives, our God seeks us. Amen. Our God seeks relationship with us. Our God extends his love to us and he draws us in. Look at this verse. John 6, verse 44, Jesus is speaking and he says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. God draws you in. His love is that powerful. I want you to notice that all Abraham originally asked of God was to move. And to separate him from his past. But God, being God, offers Abraham so much more. Some of you need to raise your expectation of God today. I said, some of you need to raise your expectation of God today. Did you hear me? You need to believe big. You need a dream bigger. You need a hope bigger. Come on. I said you need to believe bigger. You need a dream bigger. You need a hope bigger. There's people here today and those that are, some of you are watching at home. You're believing for a, a promotion on your job. And I, I just want to encourage you. God's speaking to you. Quit just stopping at that. Start believing that you're going to own your own company. Amen. 
some of you, you've been believing that you could just pay your mortgage and I'll believe with you for that. But my friend, I'm here to encourage you that God can supply exceedingly and abundantly. Come on. Watch what he does with Abraham. Abraham's like, God, I got to get out of this place. It's dry. It's hard. My past is here. Things are not working. Please just help me to escape. And God's like, escape? That's not my plan for you, although I'm going to take care of that. But Abraham, I've got so much more. I've got so much more for you. Let me remind you, this is the God who we read in Jeremiah that says, before I formed you and shaped you and put you in your mother's womb, I wrote a holy plan for your life. So watch this. Abraham's like, God, this is a mess. Maybe you've prayed this prayer. I have. This is a mess. These people are crazy. I got to get out of here. I need a fresh start. And God's like, Abraham, I got you. But what you don't know, Abraham, is I'm not just going to get you out of here. Because I wrote a holy plan for your life, and it's time we get well on the way. He says, I got so much more for you. I want you to see what God responds to Abraham with. God says to Abram four times, I will. Watch this. He says, I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. I will curse those who curse you. Now, as always, God's side of the covenant produces so much more than Abraham's. Abraham's like, God, I'm going to try to be better. I'm going to quit screwing up. If you just get me out of here. And God's like, Abraham, done. But watch what else I'm going to do for you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to curse those that curse you. And watch this, Abraham. I'm going to show you how to do it. Amen. So Abraham leaves. He obeys God. And what does God do? God shows him, makes him, blesses him, and deals with his enemies. Genesis chapter 15. Here we go. We go to verse 5. We continue in the story of Abraham. So the Lord begins to make a covenant with Abraham. Then he brought him outside, verse 5, and said, Look now towards heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And Abraham believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Then he said to him, well, let, let me just pause here for a moment. Be reminded today, God can make you all the promises in the world, but you will not experience them if you don't believe them. Come on. You got to come into agreement, remember? So we see Abraham here. It says, Abraham chooses to believe in the Lord, and the Lord accounts it to him for righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? So the Lord says to Abraham, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then Abraham brings all of these to God, and he cuts them in two down the middle, and he places each one opposite the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. Now, why did he do that? Because this was the custom of the times. When you were making a covenant... The custom was that these animals would be divided into two. Now listen. And then the two parties would walk through them, surrounded by the blood of the animals, swearing to each other what they would do or not do in the covenant. Come on. Now, pause with me here. How many of you understand today that God didn't need to cut the animals? Why does he instruct Abraham to do this? Because Abraham is struggling. We saw it. Abraham's like, God, look, I'm going to believe this, but how am I going to know that it's going to happen? So God comes down to Abraham's level. He says, look, go ahead and get the animals because this is what you're used to. 
And then we're going to do this ceremony. But watch what happens. Abraham is still human. Verse 12. Abraham falls asleep. I was reading this yesterday and I thought to myself, wow, if God is seriously having a conversation with me, I am not going to sleep. <laughs> I mean, and apparently he's been having a pretty long conversation with Abraham. We've read like 10 verses. And somehow, verse 12, now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep falls upon Abram. And behold, a whore and great darkness falls upon him. Then the Lord says to Abram, know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land. And that is not theirs. And we will and will serve them. And they will afflict them 400 years. And also the nation whom they serve I will judge. Afterwards they shall come out with great possessions. Now as for you, what is he talking about? He's talking about the Israelites. That are going to come later on. Now, as for you, Abraham, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall return here for the iniquity of the Amorites. We, we continue, verse 17. And it came to pass, this is what I want you to see. When the sun went down and it was dark, that behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between those pieces. If you look these phrases up, in the literal text, a smoking oven is a smoke which represented God's presence and his promise to consume Abraham's enemies. So, God shows up. His presence goes through the middle of the animals, and a burning torch depicts God's promise to lead Abraham. So God walked through the animals. He walks through the symbolized prizes. Why? To establish his covenant in spite of Abraham being asleep. This is some good news for you today. Some of you have been totally asleep in your walk with God. Come on. Totally asleep. <laughs> and how good is God? You could be asleep and guess what? He's still going to take care of it. I love this story. You know why? Because it shows humanity. All of us are weak at times. All of us struggle at times. All of us have hard days. All of us fail sometimes. And guess what? God is still faithful. He's faithful. But hear my heart today. See, God knew Abraham's heart. God knew that Abraham was going to believe. So he says, look, although you've fallen asleep, you shouldn't have done that. Guess what? I'm still going to take care of this for you. I'm still going to take care of this for you. So in reality, because Abraham didn't ever walk through the animals, Abraham never performed the custom. Abraham never made the promises God swore to and made the covenant himself between himself and Abraham. Now, what did the verse tell us? Let's pause for a moment. When we read this, it said in Genesis 15, 6, that this covenant was given by faith. Let's go back to verse 6. And Abraham believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. God accounts it to Abraham, meaning God appoints the covenant to him. Why? Because Abraham chose to believe. So even though Abraham doesn't perform the custom, God takes care of it. So Abraham's covenant is a faith-based covenant. Now, why am I pointing that out? Because guess what? The Bible says God gave you a measure of faith. Every single one of you can choose to believe. 
I said, every single one of you can choose to believe. And if you choose to believe, guess what? God appoints this covenant in your life. God appoints this covenant in your life. Now remember, this covenant is a gift. God gave it to him. Now this is so powerful. Why? Because number one, God can't break this covenant. Why? Because God cannot lie. Some of you need to hear that today. God cannot lie and God does not fail. So this is a gift from God to Abraham. And it's powerful because God can't break the covenant. Number two, God watches over the covenant to perform it. And number three, and get ready to shout hallelujah, God is faithful. I'm going to give you another chance by faith because you're going to go get coffee right now. Here we go. I said God is faithful. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and my friend, to this day, this is God's covenant promise to you. I will bless you. I will guide you. I will deal with your enemies. I will bless you. I will guide you. I will deal with your enemies. I will bless you. And I will make your name great. Come on, somebody. I will bless you so you can be a blessing. Amen. <laughs> Will you choose to believe today? Amen. Did you learn some things this morning? Come on, would you stand with me? Let's pray. Please don't leave. We've, we're right on time. In fact, you're going to get up. Oh, well, somebody told me that when I preach, you get out way earlier than when my dad and my brother show up. I don't know if it's true, but hey, you're on time. Plenty of time to go get that coffee at our cafe. Amen. Here we go. Lift your hands towards heaven. Come on, we're going to speak. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are and what you have done for us. And today, Lord, we come into agreement with you. And by faith today, we say yes to your covenant promise in, your, in our lives. We believe, Lord, that you will bless us, that you will make our name great. And, Lord, we promise that as you bless us, we will be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, quickly, before you go, if you're here at home and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, my friend, you need one. The Bible says that God loves you. Listen to me for a moment. He loves you so much. He sent his son to die for you. That's a big deal. And when Jesus died, he paid the price for all of your sin and all of your shame. He paid the price for every bad thing you've ever done, will do, and every bad thing that has ever happened to you. My friend, God loves you. And all he wants is to be a part of your life. He wants a relationship with you. Now, the world and religion tell us that to know God is complicated, but my friend, that's a lie. You see, the Bible says you can know Jesus by simply saying, Jesus, I want to know you. Jesus, be a part of my life. And the moment that you arrive at that place, your reality changes, you see, from that point forward, you can live knowing that when your time on earth is through, you'll spend an eternity in heaven. But also, Jesus comes and he becomes a part of your life. And my friend, I don't have time to explain to you everything that means, but this I can tell you. Life with Jesus is way better than life without him. So with, yeah, come on. With every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking, nobody leaving, just me and you and God. If you're here today or you're at home and you would say, Shannon, I want to know Jesus. Shannon, I want a relationship with Jesus. Shannon, I want Jesus to be a part of my life. Maybe you would just say, Shannon, I need Jesus. 
Maybe you're thinking, I wonder if she's talking to me. I'm definitely talking to you. Maybe you would put it like this. You know what, Shannon? All I know is that I've got to get right with God. I've got to make a change. If that's you, it would be my honor to pray with you today. Shannon, I want to know Jesus. Shannon, I need Jesus. Shannon, I want a relationship with Jesus. Shannon, i got to get right with God today. If that is you with nobody looking, just slip your hand up so that I can pray with you right where you're at. Thank you. I see your hand. Anybody else? Thank you, I see your hand. Anybody else? Thank you, thank you, I see your hand. Anybody else? Up in the riser, I see your hand. Anybody else? If you're at home, you can raise your hand up. Maybe you're here at home and at one time you walked with God, but you've drifted away. If you need to come back to Jesus, let's take care of that today. Don't let another day go by with distance between you and God. If you would say, Shannon, I need to come back to Jesus quickly, put your hand up quickly. Let's get right with God today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. There's hands up all over the auditorium. Thank you, thank you. Anybody else before? Before I pray up there in the riser, thank you. Anybody else before I pray in the back, thank you. I want to know Jesus. I've got to get right with God today. If you're at home, don't worry. I can't see your hand, but God sees your hand, and that's all that matters. I'm going to give you five more seconds. I'm going to get right with God. I'm going to say yes to Jesus. I'm making a change today. My life is going to get better. If that is you, quickly put your hand up. Five, four, three. Yes, two, and I, there's hands up all over here, two, and back there, and one. All right, if you raise your hand at any point, please repeat this prayer with me. Church family, let's join them as they pray. Say, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of all of my sins. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for your grace. From this day on, I am a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, if you prayed that prayer, please stop by our Welcome Center. We want to give you a book. It's our free gift. Most importantly, please come back to church. Last but not least, if you're here today and for some reason you can't afford your kid's ticket for Girls' Night Out, come see me. I'm going to take care of it, all right? God bless you. Have a great, great week.